Hey Martians, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome to Planet Gorgeous. My name is Jess. And today I have a crazy story to share with you guys. So, you guys know if you've been watching the videos and if you haven't been, I'll link them somewhere here, wherever the finger points, that's where they'll land. Um, so, if you've been watching, you've seen that I recently traveled over to Europe for summer travels and it was right at the beginning of all of this summer chaos. So, I'll tell you a bit about my trip because I don't think we had to, a chance to powwow about it. It was crazy. So, Memorial Day, I left and went to um, DC, caught a flight from uh, Dulles to JFK, from JFK to Heathrow. That was the flight path, right? If there was any foreshadowing about how the transportation for this trip was gonna go, it probably would have been those first two flights because the flight from Dulles was delayed like crazy. Luckily, the connecting flight to London was, we had a huge, you know, window of time before that next flight, for before the connecting flight. But the flight from JFK to London was late as well. Both flights were late. So, landed in, um, we were supposed to get to London um, around 8 a.m. We ended up getting to London, I wanna say about 3 p.m. That's how late our flight was. That's how delayed we were. So, I slept the whole flight. Uh, got to London, landed. I was so excited that I didn't care about the delays as much, but of course I wanted to get there early because we had plans and we were on a tight schedule as far as filming and things of that nature because as you know, I'm a photographer, videographer, and content creator and I wanted to get content and we had meetings and plans um, when we got there that we really we were on a tight schedule. So got to London and when we got there it was dreadfully raining. It was raining so much I ended up catching either a cold. Either way, um, it was raining so bad that first day that we were in and out of the hotel room and luckily where we stayed it was like right there in front of Big Ben and the London Eye so we were able to go back and forth from the hotel room um, when we wanted to either go out or come back in and um, like I said got there and the it was just raining like crazy like cats and dogs literally so then the next day we had a flight out of London heading to actually it wasn't a flight Okay, so the next day, <laughs> so the next day we were scheduled to go to Paris. Um, so we took a train from Paris to London. Again, foreshadowing. The train from Paris to London was, okay, first of all, the line was insane. The line made me feel like, I don't even wanna use the analogy that's coming up in my head, but the analogy, I mean, the way that it was, it was, the line was wrapped for, for miles. Miles. So the train from London to Paris was, that was crazy. The, I've never seen a line that long before and it just looked like people were, I don't know, just, they weren't, they, it defeated, it just defeated is the answer because I, I was defeated. When I turned the 24th corner on the 24th block to walk down that line of people looking like they were getting ready to be shipped somewhere, I was like, this, I'm defeated, I'm discouraged. What is this? Where are we going? Is it too late to book a flight? I was defeated, honestly. So we got, at, we got to the back of the line. I had to go all the way to the end of the line and Luckily, the line was moving really fast, but uh, the line was moving really fast. Once we got into the building where the 
actual line actually started to get into get a, get on your train to board your train um mind you it's nowhere near the entryway of the train um but anyway once we got there that it moved really fast and they were like if your plane if your train leaves in a couple minutes then you're priority so our we literally had like 10 minutes and we were so far away from the um from the train um so we got in the line went through the all the little mazes and roping that they do showed our tickets and got through security once we got through security that was still a mess and mind you we have all of our luggage with us which is one of the reasons why i told you guys i didn't shop a lot because i didn't want to be carrying shopping bags and luggage and so much stuff while backpacking so got through the security got through the checkpoint almost didn't make it because i didn't have my vaccination card um but luckily there was a nice brother african brother that pushed me through and was like uh-uh don't mess with my beautiful sister she's a queen let her through he let me through and i was relieved because i was like what are we going to do if i can't get on this train so Got through the train, got through the uh, checkpoints in the line. Honestly, you would think that I can't exact, I can't explain it enough how long this line was because even though that was the security checkpoint, I had to go through two more checkpoints that were not even close to the board, close to boarding. Finally, about two hours past the departure time, we made it to the um platform the train platform and was able to board the train and the train was packed and by this time when i tell you guys i was like defeated like whatever had come over me had come over me and i was just so tired that i really almost slept the whole train ride so a two hour train ride the train ride from london to paris is only supposed to be two hours not only were we delayed two hours or two and a half hours from getting from departing we get i want to say about an hour into the ride and the train conductor comes on and says because he speaks german or something he says that the train ride <laughs> is delayed more he stops on the tracks because there's congestion on the track there is congestion on the track so we have to stop the train and sit and so he was so caught i think taken aback as well that he didn't know what to tell us as far as updates or anything as far as like i don't know when we're leaving i'm just i'm in the same boat with you guys i'm the conductor i'm just driving this thing i don't know when we're going to get there so we were stuck on that track for about an hour and a half or two. So eventually I was like, yeah, okay. But luckily the train had, you know, a nice concession. We got some food and I got some, I got, I took a nap, got some food and went back to sleep until we took off again. And I mean, I have footage that I might insert or I'll show you in another video, just like, um, because it was truly amazing. Aside from all the travel, uh, shenanigans it was a truly amazing experience i wouldn't trade it for anything but like i said so um i'll tr i'll try to share some of the footage that we captured on those um excursions but i woke up and finally we were in paris about five to six hours later a two-hour train ride turned into a six hour five to six hour crazy train ride so we ended up we landed in paris or ended up in paris got off the train uh we stayed in paris for about uh two and a half or three days and um the flight from paris we took a flight from paris to italy italy and that flight the airport was it was packed so took a flight from paris to italy uh, we went to Venice and I don't think that flight was late or anything. It was just really packed. 
Uh, Paris did a really good job. I, I liked the airport. It was really nice. So we flew out of uh, Charles de Gaulle in Paris and then headed over to Venice. Um, I think it's Marco something. So anyway, uh, the Venice transportation, not that bad. Italy, they were on point. Um, we stayed in Venice for a few days and leaving Venice transportation, we flew from Venice to Greece and Venice to Greece was uh -huh, foreshadowing again late delayed delayed the flight from venice to italy i'm sorry from venice to greece uh was delayed we were supposed to leave we were supposed to get there i want to say at 11 ish something like that and this is why these delays can be a little bit frustrating if you don't have patience, you should not be traveling right now, especially not right now. When I travel, like I said, it was the beginning of this travel drama and travel jams and all this thing. But if you're traveling right now and you don't have patience, just cancel your trip, postpone, rain, tri uh, rain check, get your money back, hold that for another time because you will be highly frustrated and disappointed. We were supposed to land at like nine o'clock their time in Santorini and we didn't get there till like 1 a.m. 2 a.m. and we were standing on the tarmac at 2 o'clock in the morning because you know some of these airports are not like American airports if you're not used to it you might feel a little out of your element a little taken aback because the airports are like I said they're not like America and we were standing on tar tarmac at two o'clock in the morning. The thing that was the most frustrating is that you could not check into a hotel room after 12 midnight. So we ended up having to get a bread and, bread and breakfast in Santorini because we couldn't check into a hotel room. Can I, when I tell you I was, in the airport in Santorini. I kind of wanted to cry. I was getting a little defeated because I was tired. I was sick. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I can't believe we're stuck without a hotel room. We can't do anything. And so we found a bread and breakfast for like $30, which is a good thing. And honestly, I, I mean, it was a good, it was nice bread and breakfast. They didn't have a pool or anything like that, but you're in San Serena, you know what I mean? Like, who's gonna complain? I didn't complain. So we checked out of there um, when we woke up, headed right over to the hotel that we had um, in Santorini, which was um, really beautiful. And we stayed in Santorini for five days. And that was a really nice and amazing experience. I really loved Santorini a lot. Um, I will say um, traveling there was just a bit of a, a mess. Um, one of the things I did love though is just like, it is amazing flying in. We flew, like I said, we flew in in the middle of the night. When we flew from Paris to Venice, I kind of wanted to <clears throat> keep my eyes closed because I was like, I don't know what we're flying over and what we're gonna see that might make me a little bit paranoid. I am not a scary flyer. I love flying. Honestly, I'm not afraid of flying. It's one of my, you know, relaxation methods. I like to uh, fly and I relax on the flight. But something about saying, I don't know where I heard, I don't think it happened. We didn't fly over the Alps, but I thought we were gonna fly over the Swiss Alps and all these big mountainous places and ranges that I was just like, I don't know where we're going. So I'm just gonna go to sleep or close my eyes or something until we get there. But uh, flying from, like I said, into Greece, into Santorini, you, if you've never done it, you have to because it is insane. And it looks like when the plane is coming in, like you're gonna fly into a huge mountain and there's like this rock and it, it's, it's everything planted gorgeous y'all it's like it's got rocks and it's crater and it's sandy and it's hot and it's pitch black sky with all these stars and just beyond belief and beyond imagination and beyond like it just makes you feel this big in the universe as like look at this mountainous range and this 
volcano. I'm in the middle of a volcano and this is the aftermath of a volcano and I'm here and this, and you look out the window and you just see it and it looks fake, it doesn't look real. It was just, I can tear up just talking about it because it was really, really something. Like, I mean, like I've done mountains and I've, honestly this year, I've had a lot of experience with mountains driving the California coast and PCH, but this was different. This was like, it was like out of the Flintstones or out of a storybook or a movie. It was really magnificent. And if you ever get a chance, you should experience it. So anyway, moving on from that. So, um, as I was saying, so yeah. So leaving Greece, getting ready to board and um, the flight from Greece, that one wasn't delayed at all. But the, the flight from Greece was between, and another thing about traveling right now, gate changes. You'll be sitting at your gate and next thing you know, it's time to change gates or it, you gotta change gate. So yeah, so as I was saying, so we were sitting, another thing about traveling right now, if you, traveling, you, I told you, you're gonna have to have your patience. If you wear your patience on your sleeve, traveling right now is not for you, especially in Europe. Especially in Europe. So, while traveling, uh, while at the airport in Greece, we didn't have any delays, didn't have any problems, other than having to change our gate. We had to change our gate like three times. And honestly, like I was saying, wearing your patience, you have to have your patience because changing gates, I was getting text messages left and right like every single time. Uh, your gate has changed. Your gate has changed on every flight. Almost every flight, the gate has changed. But, and that's a little, it can be intimidating. It can be scary because if you're traveling abroad and you've never been to these airports or if you've never been to that place before, it could be, it could be a disaster. But anyway, um, the gate changes were a nuisance. So, as I was saying, here is where it goes completely left. So, we get to we get to Germany, and we're starving. I'm hungry, like. I, I, but I'm holding my appetite because I want to eat when I get back to London because I had some reservations for places where we wanted to go when we got back to London. So we get we get to Germany, grab some airport food, and um, we're waiting and checking out all the other you know um, places and stuff like that in Germany. We get to London, and upon arrival, um, we see a sea of luggage. And when I said a sea, when I say a sea, the floor is covered in London, in uh, in luggage. the The floor is covered. So we're thinking, well, you know, the baggage people um, had to clear off the conveyor belts because the conveyor belts were, you know jammed or over because it, it was it was heavy travel season and again i remind you this is the beginning of travel season not now like this is probably the peak but this was like i said not the peak so we see a sea of luggage and we're like hmm well where's our luggage uh-huh where's our luggage so I sit down and relax and like, oh yeah. And mind you, I have a whole day plan, right? So I'm like, let's hurry up and get this luggage. So we're looking all around for our luggage and we're just like, okay, it's coming, it's coming. So we look and we're like, well, I don't speak German. So did it, did we miss the, did we read? The sign wrong that told us that this is the flight that, I mean, this is the um, luggage conveyor that our, our our bags would be on. We go, we check it. 
Once. Okay, we'll sit down and wait. Sit in, we get a seat in front of it. All right, we'll sit down and wait. And then I started to see all of the people from, well, no, not all the people. I saw like one or two people from our flight grab their things. Let's see, and I'm like, well, this is the right one. This is the right place, right? So I am looking everywhere. I'm like, okay, it's starting to get a little weird. And so if you've ever been to Heathrow, then you may know that it's a big airport and they have a lot of conveyor belts for baggage claim. So there are thousands and thousands of bags that are just in the middle of the floor. And we're like, how are we supposed to differentiate our luggage from other people's luggage? And it, I mean, literally it's on the floor. So eventually I just sit down and I wait and I wait. And then we go over to the um, baggage claim representative for Eurowings, because that's the airline we flew with. And they're like, uh, the bags have already come off for your flight. And after, this is probably like an hour, an hour in, the hour after getting off the flight. We're like, okay, our bags didn't come. What's going on? The lines are long. There are people trying to jump us. And one guy was like, right here, it, like I'm at the window and he's right here trying to tell the guy about his luggage and his problem. And I'm like, and then not only that, but you know how you pick up and you're hearing other people's problems? Like you hear all of these problems of missed flights and delayed flights and it was a that place was a mess so anyway so we get we uh we go to the window we tell the guy um yeah our luggage we can't find our luggage he has no clue so he says he'll put in a report so he put in a missing luggage report uh we describe what our luggage looked like um and we only had two that was missing so um he said uh, no, under normal circumstances, we'll have your luggage delivered in London tomorrow. 24 hours. But our flight leaves in 24 hours. So we're like, we're going to be back in the United States in 24 hours. Is there any way, like, where's, where's our bag? He said, oh, I don't know when it's going to come, but... Um, if you're going to be in the United States, it may take up to three to five days for your luggage to arrive. And my heart sunk because I was like, that sucks. Because I personally did not pack many valuables for this trip. Um, but I put a few things in there that I, you know, really... A lot of stuff was sentimental to me. I had my nephew's pictures in there. I had purses in there. I had my souvenirs from the Louvre in that luggage. Um, all my souvenirs were in the luggage from everywhere that we went. And then we had another suitcase with all of our camera equipment and a few items that I was like oh my gosh if these if this luggage never makes it to us we've lost a lot of stuff so like I said my heart sunk you know but I took it on the chin because I'm a champ you know what I'm saying so well <laughs> to, to get on the chin because I'm a G you know I'm a G I can't freak out right now and plus that I still want to enjoy my trip this is the end of the trip like why does this have to happen so we said we you know just leave it up to the universe to figure out you know getting this stuff back to us so i said well how are we gonna spend the rest of the day and all the plans were like completely derailed because of this because we were already a couple hours late now and we have no clothes I didn't have any clothes so 
we spent the rest of the day in London and went and got some dinner and went shopping all solemnly and, you know, just chin down and just sad because we're like, our luggage is gone with no hopes of being returned to us. So, uh, but I held, we didn't uh, put the hotel in London because we knew we wouldn't be there. So we put our physical address uh, on there to, we put, um, to be returned home at home. So we end up getting back home and I, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything um, as far as like while we're there. But yeah, so, oh yeah. So no, the next day we go to back to Heathrow because no one called or anything within those 20, within the 24 hours. So we said, when we get to Heathrow, we're going to go, once we get our COVID test uh, to enter back in the United States, we'll go upstairs and go to the Eurowings booth because the person who put in the ticket for us was a Heathrow baggage claim employee. So, uh, but he did advise, at, and I think I looked up online, that you can go to the airline that you're flying with, their office or their uh, ticket stand and uh try to either open a dispute with them or see what they can do and all i wanted was someone to tell me you know this is where your bags are so we get to heathrow finish our COVID testing get to the window and the line is again not ridiculous at this point but it's building up because there are two people in front of us and the two people in front of us have the most complicated issues with their request. They have missed both of their flights due to delays. One lady was, I think the lady was going to Pakistan and the man was going, I don't remember where, but um, nonetheless, they were stuck in London <laughs> and the lady told them they'd be stuck in London for three to four days um, before she could book them a flight. She worked it out though, like they stood there uh, and they were relentless and persevering and she gave them next day flights or same day flights or something like that. So it worked out for them, good for them. We get to the window and she says, uh, we said, uh, we're here because you know we lost our luggage and um, we need to find out about our luggage. And she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I saw you standing there the whole time. And if I would have known what you wanted, mind you, there's only one person working. And back up to the, um, when it comes back up to the baggage claim with Heathrow, same thing, one person working. And honestly, throughout the whole ordeal, there was only one to two people working in all of these airlines. When I, I lied and said that we didn't have any problems in Italy, we did have problems in Italy. The line to bo uh, the ticket line was ridiculous. The line was all the way out to the food court, um, and it took so long to get through the line. We thought we were going to miss our flight because there was only two lines open for all of the flights it was crazy it was when i say disorganized and i would just say i don't know normal um uh, occupancy or whatever maybe or normal staffing for some of these places but a lot of these airports i've only seen one to two people working one to two um checking gates open for thousands of people and it's like they don't have enough manpower for the amount of travel that's occurring so i seen on the news recently that they've asked the airlines to stop booking flights and they do need to stop taking the flights because they don't have the manpower they don't have the flights they don't have the planes they don't have the pilots they don't have the stewardess they don't have enough people to man the amount of traffic that's going on and i don't know where all this traffic is coming from honestly it's like a whole new breed of people have been born and maybe they're just like a breed of new travelers or something maybe the pandemic just gave everybody this itch to travel and 
to seize life or something like that. So I don't really know. All I know is there's a lot of people traveling and not enough people to handle it. But anyway, uh, we get to Heathrow. The lady says, I think she told us to go to another location. She's like, yeah, the wrong booth. I'm sorry that you waited so long. You'll need to go somewhere else. So, you know, we said, forget about it. We'll handle it when we get home. So we get home uh, finally and I put in the ticket number that the person at the Heathrow um, baggage claim desk put in for us. Put it in, look on the Eurowings website, and lo and behold, there is a ticket there. But it says, your luggage has not been located. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But, I will tell you guys what came in handy for number one, my sanity, and just, your girl be thinking. These little air tags. These air tags came in so handy. I programmed these air tags for all of the luggages before we left. Now I'm gonna tell you a little story about these air tags. Put these air tags in the luggage. And I said, we'll put them in all the luggages and we'll put them on each person. And my sister had programmed them as well. And so she could see where all the luggages are and where we are just in case anything happened. And she named them and everything like that. So we get, I put them in the thing and I say, guess what? We can track our bags because there are, air tags in the luggages. The only thing is, is I can't tell which luggage is which with the air tags. So I log into the, into the uh, find my devices, look and locate my luggage. And I see the luggage is in Germany. It's still in Germany. It's still at Terminal 2, sitting at some Popeyes in Germany. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's there. The luggages are there. Please, either don't let someone steal these, or like why are they there? But I was pretty calm about it because I figured since they're still at the airport, no one has mistakenly claimed our luggage or stolen our luggage. So I was a little bit relieved by that. So I'm looking on the air tags. So I'm checking these air tags every day. I'm checking the air tags, checking the claim, checking the air tag, checking the claim, air tag, claim, air tag, claim. And finally, and then, you know, I'll tell you guys this too, a little secret. If you ever have an issue, because I did, we did try to call like several times to Eurowings and Heathrow and Sometimes it seems like once you get out of people's face, like out of their physical presence, it seems like it's harder to get help or assistance. So um, you start to feel even more discouraged. What I will tell you is a trick that I like to do is I like to go to Twitter, call that company out and say, hey, I've been trying to reach you guys through your means of communication and it's not working. What are you gonna do? If you ever want a company to get right on it, they will get right on it. Most of these companies have customer service representatives on these social media sites that are, it's a lot quicker. It's like skipping the chain or skipping a level uh, so that you can get the service that you need to get um, sometimes expeditiously, sometimes in this case, it really, it, I got a quick response, but to no avail, no, these people, they still didn't have any clue. And they gave me the runarounds. Your wings is, um, not one of the greatest airlines that we've, I've come across. So, and the, uh, to be honest with you, most of them are not doing that great anyway. So in the customer service 
uh, department or experience. So with that being said, like I was saying, um, reach out to Twitter and see if they can get you some help. Um, so none of the emails were working. Jump to Twitter, jump to email, jump to the ticket claim, jump back to find my and look and check in the air tags. And finally I get a phone call five days later and they say the man, um, which I'm not saying that he should, but I didn't, ex I'm, I didn't have any expectations, um, with that phone call, but like he did not, he was not friendly. He j I mean, honestly, I couldn't even confirm whether who he was with. He was like, Hey, I have your bag. And I'm like, who are you? Where are you from? You lost your luggage? Yes, I lost my luggage. Um, well, I have your bags. And I'm like, are you with the airline? And I didn't get a chance to, you know, confirm anything with them. He just said, I have your bags. They're on the way. Click. And he hung up. So I was like, well, that's not, re it was reassuring, but not reassuring. So, um, so I'm like, on the fence about with my feelings like how do I feel so I just wait and I'm like I uh, will see once again what happens if it comes or not so um so the um about I want to say three days later so this is about maybe eight or nine days in now um I'm, I'm still checking the air tags you know just to make sure that the information that he gave correlates with what's on the ticket and what's on the air tag and what's happening. So the air tag finally moves and it goes to Heathrow. I said, oh my gosh, the bags are gone to Heathrow. Okay, so this is a good sign. And then the ticket updated and it said, it had the whole journey. So the bags will go from Germany to Heathrow to Canada and then finally to North Carolina. So the bags finally make it through to Canada and then RDU and then I'm like, okay, the bag made it to North Carolina. Yes, so my bags are here and I started to feel relieved. I started to feel so relieved that, you know, it's getting close and it looks like everything is gonna work out. So then um, finally we're like, we're having a gathering and I get a phone call from one of the um, contractors that works with the airport. And he's like, I have your luggage. I'm on the highway and I'll be bringing it to you. And so he gets here and I come, you know, I get there to meet him. And he's like, all right, here's your uh, manifest. I only have one luggage. And I'm like, only one? I have two. So I'm like, oh my goodness. So... Mind you, I told you, I don't know which air tag is which. So I'm like, okay, well, this is the luggage with all the camera equipment. It's like $10,000 worth of camera equipment in there. I'm excited because I'm like, we got the camera equipment back at least. So look, and I'm like, this is not the camera equipment. I'm relieved still that the bag is there, but I'm like, where is the other luggage? So he's like, I don't have no other luggage. I don't know what happened. This is what they gave me. It's out of my hands. You'll have to call. So I call Novell, and so I wait a day, wait another day, and I'm like, where is that luggage? And at this point, I'm starting to be more discouraged because I don't have an air tag or nothing that can tell me, at least pinpoint me in the direction of their luggage. So eventually I say, you know what? I'm about to get up and I'm gonna go straight to the airport myself. So I look on the um, Your Wings uh, manifest and I get the information that says where what airline it was on. It flew by Air Canada. And I say, I'm gonna go to the Air Canada window and baggage claim and see if I can find this other luggage because I don't know where it said I it the the Eurowings thing said there were two luggages they located both of them and they were both together so I wanted to know why only one came you guys when I tell you I drove to the airport um went through the terminal went to uh the baggage claim looked for the Air Canada window 
As I'm walking up to the Air Canada window, when I tell you I could have kissed the ground, there's the window, the office is pit, is dark. There's nobody working. The doors are closed and it's locked, but my luggage is sitting right in the window, right in the window. I was like, there it is. There's the luggage. I went crazy. I was like, oh my God, there is the luggage. When I tell you that was one of the best feelings ever like just seeing that luggage sitting there so i ran upstairs uh went to the air canada ticket office and was like uh my luggage is downstairs in the office and i need someone to come unlock it and get my luggage out he's like the guy's like there's nobody down there no there's nobody down there he's like well you're gonna have to wait he said did you see your luggage i said yes i saw my luggage is in the window and i'd like to have it he's like okay so mind you, once again, like I said, there's only one or two people working up there, but he <laughs> leaves the poor co-worker sitting there checking in all these people. He comes down and he helps me get this luggage out. And when I tell you I was relieved to finally retrieve my luggage after two and a half weeks of traveling and without it, I was so relieved because, I mean, it took... It might have taken like two and a half to three weeks to get that luggage back. And at times it was very scary and very discouraging because I was like, I was ready to file a claim. And what, two things I will say, the air tags, the air tags and travel uh, baggage insurance, travel and baggage insurance. If you're traveling overseas or anywhere, make sure you get that. Like you you really do need that because there's so many things that could go wrong. And the last thing you want to do is to be caught off guard or taken aback because you don't have things. I mean, some things are just irreplaceable. Um, I know. I personally would not put personal items. I typically would not store camera equipment or anything like that under the plane. I don't typically store things of value under the plane. It's just that one time that, you know, you kind of think, uh, well, I made it this far, so everything will be fine. No, don't store your valuables under the plane. Get travel insurance, baggage insurance. These air tags, they are really 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 lifesavers you will not regret it if if nothing else you can at least pinpoint a general vicinity it really it gives you down to the uh, latitude and longitude of where the item is so and it has alarms on it too that lets you know you know that you can alarm if you don't have it. It's just like find my iPhone or find my device. If you play the sound, it'll alarm and you can hear where the item is. So y'all, I know that was a long story and I thank y'all for sticking through it, but I felt like it could be helpful to someone who is traveling right now, especially traveling abroad with all of the confusion and delays and cancellations and all of the things that have been going bonkers in our travel system these days with our airlines and everything. And like I said, it's just not the airlines, it's the train stations, the bus stations, airlines, and anywhere you go pretty much, there's a, a backlog on lot, a lot of things. So have your, have your patience and your, uh, at least put on a facade of uh compassion if you don't have compassion um but you gotta treat these pe treat people nicely and have some compassion and some empathy for people um right now because they are struggling with you know like i said working alone and not having help and when you know there are uh i won't get too much into my proclivities about you know certain systems and structures, but in the system uh, with people having to work and, you know, just take care of their families or their households or themselves, uh, you end up bearing the brunt of a company and a corporation that, you know, is thankless and 
you know, it's hard and these people, people are working by themselves and it doesn't help to, it's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to help to be nasty or rude or, you know, to just verbally or physically assault anyone because of, you know, your frustration. There are ways to, uh, remedy situations and hopefully everything can work out for, um, for you, um, in the end. But as I was saying, you know, just have patience. And if you don't have patience and you know, you don't have patience, stay home because, or find another way because, it's uh it it's a mess <laughs> it's a mess out there but anyways y'all thank you for chatting with me and listening to my crazy story time if y'all want to hear more about my trip or see more footage from the trip follow me on instagram twitter tiktok um at planet gorgeous and to become a martian don't forget to click subscribe uh, turn on your notifications, like this video, thumbs up if you liked it. And until next time, see you later, Martian Tribe.